I would like to introduce all of you to uh, the wonderful two gentlemen, uh, Nate and James from Servios. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Roy, uh, for the uh, lovely introduction, and uh, thank you uh, very much to uh, VRLA um, for really putting this amazing event together, and uh, Cosmo and Johnny and everyone else. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. It's, a, it's been amazing to see this community grow over the past few years. So VRLA is really the, the nexus of the VR industry, uh, and we're super excited to see all the amazing showcases here today. And of course, yeah, thanks, thanks to Roy Taylor and AMD uh, for all the support of the community, and of course, uh, for sponsoring us today as well. Um, so uh, if you uh, didn't already know about Servios, um, we actually started uh, way back in the day as uh, Project Holodeck at the Mixed Reality Lab. Um, and uh, this is a uh, lab inside the Institute for Creative Technologies at USC. And um, what you see here in this uh, picture is uh, James and uh, Alex, who's our software lead and co-founder, um, with uh, kind of this uh, crazy jerry-rigged project where you consider it kind of like a wireless multiplayer version of the Vive, where you could be two Vives in the same space at the same time. This was uh, essentially two and a half years ago. Um, and it's, uh, you know, skateboard helmet, um, duct tape together, and PVC, PVC pipe together with uh, PlayStation Move. Um, Basically, we put together an entire system by hand. It actually uses uh, Mir's uh, technology uh, that's embodied inside the Razer Hydra and the PlayStation Move. And after putting all this together, we realized that it's just an amazing experience to have your entire body inside VR, to be untethered, and to be able to interact with a number of different things and to be there with another person. Yeah, so we actually built a lot of prototypes based off this technology, and we're excited to see the, um, the parallels now that we can bring it into a full room-scale experiences like uh, HTC Vive and, and with uh, Oculus Touch and PlayStation VR as well. Um, you may remember we, uh, we did a, a really early game demo called Zombies on the Holodeck. It won some Proto Awards back in 2014. Uh, this is where we really started to explore what it was like to be in VR with other people, be able to actually have... Um, embodiment and, and social body language, and you could actually interact uh, really uh, realistically and dynamically together. Uh, and then, of course, um, being able to broadcast that to an audience, both locally and online, um, all of these things started to come together as, as really exciting points. Um, so we, we want to show you a quick video. Um, this is actually, uh, we had a bunch of people come in and try this demo. Um, one of them that we found the most entertaining was uh, actually Dr. Drew. Uh, he, he had a really profound um, insight and that we want to share. And this is, good. this is the kind of thing that we think that we, we should strive for um, all VR users and VR players uh, to feel like. Uh, this, is, this is really the kind of feeling that we want to go for um, in terms of VR games and VR entertainment as a whole. Uh, I feel like I've visited some other world. Uh, and. It really is like otherworldly. If you've been somewhere else, and uh, I was deeply invested in the experience while I was in it, uh, I was uh, amazed at the the, the depth, of the, the immersiveness of the experience, and I expected to be sort of disoriented when I got out, or to be dizzy. I was not dizzy. I was a little euphoric, and I want to go back. <laughs> That's about all I know. But uh, like truly, like nothing else I've ever done, like a you know, Disneyland ride mixed with a roller coaster. I mean. We're, we're, I don't need to go anywhere anymore. Did you feel sick at all? Did not, I didn't have any of those experiences. I, kept, I expected to feel sick or disoriented. I just felt immersed. And then I felt like I'm back. And I do feel uh, really like I've been hypnotized or something, like a little, like, little refreshed. Yeah, so um, multiplayer and telepresence, a ton of fun with friends. Um, whether you're locally or, or, or online over a network, it's a blast to be able to see each other and, and interact in really compelling ways. And of course, spectating and broadcasting, this actually really is what is a key to drawing in a non-VR audience. So uh, something that we're gonna have to strive to do, um, all of us in this room as VR developers, is constantly trying to evangelize to non-VR consumers, and of course, try to bring them in under the umbrella and try to convert them to uh, experiencing these types of uh, um, VR content. And so broadcasting and streaming in a really interesting way is, is definitely a way to do that. Um, so, we kind of broke it down into a, a common foundation where we see this really uh, large spectrum going all the way from extreme mixed reality and big warehouses, kind of like uh, the void and a lot of the stuff that uh, Mark Bullis is doing at the Mixed Reality Lab, 
um, all the way down to a smaller room scale experience uh, um, like the HTC Vive, uh, PlayStation VR, and of course everything in between like omnidirectional treadmills and these types of things. Um, and we, we realize there's this common foundation uh, between all of them. Um, being able to have emergent interaction in your full environment, um, having full 360 engagement is really enticing. So grabbing, throwing, climbing, shooting, all of these different things that um, you would expect to do. Uh, the goal is that, that anything that you see in your environment that you expect to be interactive, you want to have it be interactive. Um, and so building out a generic uh, interaction architecture to do that is one of the, the key things to unlocking this type of experience for users. Um, of course, social multiplayer is a big part of it. We're seeing lots of social apps now starting to grow and, and, and bolster their communities. Um, being social is a key part of, of playing together as well. Um, so being able to uh, bring your friends' um, avatars into the experience together, being able to um, have facial expression or high-five each other or, or even just, just interact in a variety of ways and collaborate to do different things. This, goes, um, this is a really key foundation to building compelling uh, gaming content as well, and it's something that, to really watch out for in the future. Uh, and of course, uh, cinematic spectating is something that, that we've um, really hit on today, and of course, we're doing our event later tonight. Uh, we we want to showcase what it's like to have dynamic camera angles, um, both of people moving around physically in the environment and moving around virtually in their VR uh, world. Uh, and being able to splice those together in a really interesting way that's uh, cinematic uh, and compelling for people outside of VR. So you can actually tune in online uh, or hang out locally um, wherever the event is and, and be able to experience it almost, almost by proxy. Um, so these are all the, the, uh, the foundational pieces that we see uh, helping expand VR uh, into a much larger audience over time. So um, I want to uh, talk a little bit about active VR. Um, Active VR is not just uh, kind of an excuse to uh, make a cool action video game. Uh, it's actually a philosophy that we adhere to very closely. Um, and uh, this ability to move around inside virtual reality, uh, really, it, it's very crucial. It lets us tap into our latent humanity. Um, human beings, were hardwired to do a lot of things that we don't get to do in civilization like we should. We're hardwired to run, jump, chase, collect, build, fight all of these uh, different things that we do in nature. And when you, um, and we're also com um, hardwired to explore completely new worlds, to be at uh, the, uh, you know, at a frontier and actually see something new. To walk over a hill and see something you've never seen before is something that uh, we're hardwired to do. We don't get to do anymore because we've explored the entire world. So when you combine this, um, this physicality with uh, the infinite possibilities of new worlds inside virtual reality, you really get something that's completely new. It it's kind of allows, um, allows us to change the domain of humanity. Really, it expands what's possible, um, not only in our lives, but in our minds. And uh, really, um, society at this point has become very kind of homogenized. I mean, like, even going to another country, you'll see a McDonald's. It's, um, you don't really have too many new cultural experiences you can get yourself into. And so VR is actually really, really, really crucial in general for humanity. It's something that, as time goes on, is going to be necessary for us to really remember how to be human fundamentally. And so as an, uh, as an example of um, active VR, we're really excited to uh, announce and showcase our first launch title, Raw Data, today at the event. Uh, so we're actually down the show floor. Come check us out. Um, this is really um, our uh, early pre-alpha build to kind of showcase what these components of active VR can feel like. Um, and of course, this applies to um, every genre, you know, platforming, RPGs, MMOs, you name it. All of these things are going to come to life in VR in the very near future. Um, we have, we're firm believers that we're going to have our Oasis, we're going to have our Sword Art online. That stuff is most certainly uh, in the near future uh, as an industry. Um, and for us personally, our first step towards getting there is actually building out an, uh, an online FPS um, where you can have co-op multiplayer in a PVE environment. That's a player versus uh, uh, enemies. And, uh, and so this is the kind of thing that, that we wanted to build out just as a, a, a first stepping stone towards building this foundation that um, a lot of different types of VR gaming content can be built on. Um, so we're really amped about it. Um, we hope you come over and check it out. And uh, thanks so much for having here. It's, it's, it's been a blast and we're super thrilled to be here. So thanks, thanks again. Thank you.